would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's June 30th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Instrument Length, episode number 744. And I'm confident that we have one of the greatest guests of COL time on the show. It's Dr. Edward. Edward Angelini Cook. Yay! Hi. Thank you, in studio audience. Oh my gosh. (laughs) They just wouldn't stop clapping. Yeah, it's like they missed the cue. (laughs) I was pressing the wrong button. (laughs) Wow. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, Gary. Why did well, welcome back, Ed. Thank well, you. because we've missed him. Well, Do okay. you know he has not been here in like four months? <gasps> wow. Nice. Wait a minute. Oh, shit. I already did. Hold on. Everybody else will be able to hear this. <gasps> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Entire audience just gasped. Yes, as they should. Wow. Four months. Has it really been that long? Yes, sir, because the last Landscape of Relationships series episode was, I believe, 730, and that was Mm -hmm. back in February. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So we need to do some catching up, mister, real quick before we get into today's particular topic. I think you did a show and did some traveling. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yep. I just did. Um, so in March, I was in a uh, amazing production of Kinky Boots uh, here in Wilmington. Um, sold out every single performance. Um, it was a really wonderful experience. Um, I, with Kevin Chamberlain as your understudy. I mean, uh, I get it. <laughs> well... <laughs> He'll, he'll make an appearance later in 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 this topic. Um, and then what else? I finished. Uh, oh my gosh! So I haven't been here since. Um, so I, I finished teaching a semester at University of Delaware, an introduction okay. to sexuality and gender studies, which went really really well. But that was a hell of a lot of work teaching mm. undergrads. Mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> that was that 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 was a lot. So is that is that to be interpreted as you want to teach again, but you want to teach grads? And not no, undergrads? I'll do it again. Like, because you know, this I had to like build the class as I was going through, so it was just a lot of work. <clears throat> so mm-hmm. next time when I do it, it'll, it won't be as much work. But right. I think my student reviews were. Very, very positive. So they'll probably have me back at some point. Um, hey. So that's that's good. Um, and then what else? Um, and then I just got back from a two week trip to California. I went to uh, the uh, the Pride Night at Disneyland, <clears throat> um, and then went to Tidal Wave in Palm Springs. Lovely. And how, how was well, that? How was that? I was gonna ask, like, how was how was Tidal Wave in Palm Springs? Well, um, it was interesting. 
Um, so that was the first time that I've ever been there. And um, it was a lot. Uh, there were a lot of people. It was definitely not drenched fur. <laughs> mm. um, and, uh, you know, like there were... Um, there were a lot of people there happened. So, you know, one of my experiences was it felt like a revisit to like high school. Um, only this time I was like popular. <laughs> oh. Um, and, uh, like there were, uh, and I was a lot more confident. Um, so like I was totally fine interacting with people and making friends and, and that was really interesting. There was one situation that happened where a certain person was at this event and uh, I went completely like scared little kid. Um, so Kevin Chamberlain was there. Oh. Um, and Fair celebrity. My, I have to say, I know. I'm unaware of this Kevin Chamberlain. Okay. Oh your my so he is, um, I have been aware of Kevin Chamberlain for like ever. So he was um, in the movie Trick, um, very small role in the, in the bar or outside of the bar. Um, and then, you know, he's done some Broadway. He did um, uh, Susical and The Addams Family. And um, he was on some Disney show uh, shows. And mm -hmm. um, he's just hot. Um, he's very, very attractive. So um, I'm like standing by the pool and my friend goes, hey, that guy looks familiar. And I look up and I'm like, that's Kevin Chamberlain. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we have to say hello to him. We have to say hello to him. Um, and like confident me is like, oh yes, I can confidently say hello to Kevin. Like I can definitely do that. So we get in the pool and he's five feet away from me. And I go like mute. <laughs> I mm. can't, I cannot for the life of me um, say hello to this person. Um, oh, and I was like, you have to say Get on the edge of the pool, uh, get on on your knees and start going, I'm not worthy. I'm not <laughs> worthy. I mean, and if your if your head ends up in his crotch, that's just bonus. Yeah, true. Oh my goodness. Um, so it was it was definitely one of those moments where I was like, where did my confidence go? <laughs> it was right here. I literally just grabbed somebody and made out with them. Where? <laughs> Wow. Where is it? it's, it's not here right now um so eventually i just pushed my friend towards him and i was like you have to say hello uh and and he did and i waved <laughs> and he passed by and i brushed my shoulder up against his and i said that was that was a success <laughs> but it was all but like but also fair enough like he he was always surrounded by people he was always in conversation there was never a like golden opportunity to like say hello so i think that was also a factor as well mm, that's fair mm -hmm. so and... it got me thinking about the topic of confidence mm -hmm. um and how there's a lot of situations in our community and that you know, a lot of people have a very different relationship with confidence um, and that it can be really important in initiating relationships. Um, so I thought it would be a good thing to talk about. I think it is. This is why That's I'm fair. Single. Yeah. <laughs> because you didn't go mute when you met a bear celebrity at a pool party? No, because no, he doesn't because have confidence. I don't really have the confidence to, 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 to like go up to somebody and say, hey, you're hot. You want to go on a date? Or, hey, you're hot. Want to come back to my uh, apartment? Or, hey, you're hot. Can we go up to your apartment? Something like that. <laughs> I can't just walk up to somebody like that. I'd be like, I just like, yeah. Fear just keeps moving me backwards away from them. That's fair. 
I mean, it, yeah. it would it would take some gumption, some confidence to walk up and be like, hey, I just moved recently here. Would you like to see my brand new clean apartment? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't be able to say that. Yeah, but you could anyway. Uh, see, the brand new part was accurate. Oh, <laughs> I got I got it. I got what you put down there. I knew what you were saying. <laughs> I don't think I'm like, Jerry well, did. you just moved in, so I was kind of giving you the grace of, you know. Yeah, but you said clean. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Everyone's level of clean is different. So you, anyway. Well, that's fair. I didn't, I didn't even have a bed yet. I still got really like several boxes of DVDs. Though. That's yeah. true. That's true. I got a bat mattress on. Next week. So with that, uh, Ed, we we are very happy to have you back and glad to hear about your escapades. I mean, your adventures and <laughs> your experiences that you've been having. Um, mm -hmm. And this does also tie into like, you know, because you started returning to theater. I'm curious about what your relationship with Kinky Boots is like, because Kinky Boots as a show is about confidence. It's about like being proud of who you are and like right. a company making a change and like moving away from the old way of doing things and moving into a new way of, of business and what that does to the community. Yeah. So, so I guess, okay. So I do have something to say about that. So, you know, this year I have um, started kind of getting back into theater after being away for quite a long time for, you know, school things. And this show was really different because when I did chess, right, like that was, <clears throat> um, that was just a lot of people who really just like chess, who just came together to do this. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, but this was different. Like, th like this cast was very, very very talented um mm. and i remember even the audition process i've also started taking voice um started working with a voice coach again and um you know i knew that like i didn't know what role i wanted i just knew that i wanted to like just audition right just to say that i auditioned for this show right. i knew i wasn't going to be charlie i thought well maybe i can be um don um but i didn't really know what i really wanted to do so I sang a song from Head Over Heels, um, which is the Go-Go's um, musical um, called, what song did I sing? Um, I don't remember. Um, oh crap, hold on. But it was, um, it was good. It was something I've never sung before. Um, and the way that my uh, voice coach did, oh, Mad About You. I sang Mad About You from Head Over Heels. And it was, and it was great. And it was a lot of fun. And, um, and I remember going into the audition and just, you know, um, just being really confident, right, in my ability to, like, perform the song and deliver the story that was associated with the song. And I remember um, right after the audition going to Midwest Bear Fest um, and... Mm -hmm. Uh, not getting a call back and being kind of bummed out. But then when I got back, um, I got an email saying that like, hey, we want you to play George. And um, if you uh, know anything about the show, so George is the factory manager um, and he's kind of the like bridge between like the old way of doing things and the new and the, and the new way of doing things. Um, and um, it was, it was kind of cool because um, walking into rehearsals, I felt like a fish out of water because these were people who were a lot younger than I was, um, mm. who kind of all knew each other. And I was kind of the new person to the group. Um, so I felt kind of good that like, you know, I made enough of an, uh, of an impression to like, you know, have a role in the show, um, but it was a little intimidating being among a lot of people who knew each other, who have worked together with each other. Um, but they were all very welcoming and very, um, uh, very uh, fun. They were a lot of fun. And 
uh, I'm very much of the idea that like when you're doing a show like this, you have to make choices um, and you have to just, um, uh, yeah, like just do something. Right. Um, and if it doesn't land, it doesn't land. But like, you know, it, this isn't an opportunity to like not make choices. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of my mantra is like make good choices. So I remember like halfway through the process um, and the director who was also like, un- the, our director was like the best person to like direct this show. And his, this show was so important to him and he wanted to make sure that like we were, um, we were sending this message out into the world as it was intended to do. And he was wow. very intentional about that. And um and I remember halfway through being just being like, I don't know if I'm doing the job <laughs> or whatever. And <laughs> he was like, um, he was like, I love what you're bringing to the role of George. Um, I love how you're like really caring and um, you're really supportive of Charlie, who's the main um, character and like wanting to support him and wanting to know that like he has people to support him. And it was really interesting because if you are somebody who has, um, like, if you know anything about Kinky Boots, right? Like, so his dad dies and he has to, like, um, right. change his life to, like, do something different. And he, like, makes a really bold choice to go in a completely different direction, um, which was really scary for him. And um, and it was very, for me, it was very much like reparenting myself, Um uh, because, you know, with me and my journey, right, like, you know, after getting clean and, like, um, deciding to go back to school um, and do something that I've never done before, it was a really cool thing of, like, being able to, like, support myself through the show, mm-hmm. I guess is a, a cool way to say it. So um, by the end of it, by the end of the process, um, it felt really good. And I got to wear kinky boots, right? I got to wear these, Yay. like, really badass boots on stage and wear this, like, fur blue jacket. Um, and just feeling like a complete badass um, okay. at the end of the show. Yeah. It was yeah, nice. But- and you're right. The, the show is very much about confidence and being true to yourself. And... Um, yeah, um, it was a joy to be able to perform that show. Well, good. I'm glad. I mean, I, I think from what I recall, having seen the movie and then seeing the show, like that is kind of the core of its essence is like, I think, two particular things. One, authenticity, but also going forth into the world confidently. Right. Like based it in that particular thing. And like it's not often I feel like a show, whether it be a play or a drama, a musical, a comedy, whatever, like just really hits it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why they're hits, right? Like they're, yeah, they're right. smashes. Like they, you know, get off Broadway productions and travel the world and do tours and, you know, because, they they bring all of the things together that kind of make it magical. Um, so yeah, like I, I think that like it's uh, it's definitely in that realm. So how do we parlay that into our personal lives? Because I think, especially as Americans, I can't speak for outside of our country. I think we're sort of in awe of confidence. Like for those of us that don't maybe have it all the time or feel that we have to turn it on, it may feel more like that it's an act. I feel like we're in where we re- revere people. We are in awe of people. We look up to people. We find confident people attractive and or sexy, like because we don't see that within ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's 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 my my take on it because I think that's part of what media sells us like, yeah, sex sells, but what we're being sold as I also think confidence as in like 
look at how confident this individual is looking this way. Like, you know what I mean? Right. And so mm-hmm. we, 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 we buy into that or we are a part of that, you know, commercialization commodity concept of like that confidence can be obtained by X, mm-hmm. X being fill in the blank. This, yep. this watch, this phone, this object, this suit, this hat, this shirt, this food product, this green smoothie, this like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I just feel like, yeah. like that's, you know, and, and I don't know if we've learned the lesson, like that actually none of that matters. <laughs> the stuff I mean. Yeah. Like it's not the clothes you wear. It's not, you know. It's not the the products that you buy. Is that the food that you or the drink? You know what I mean? Like like it's a whole different yeah. thing. I feel like, I feel like like some people are really onto that, and I think younger generations I liked to think are onto that. But then I then I question that because I think the technology is the is more the barrier than anything now. Like to use Jeff's analogy in this situation, he can get the, the designer suit, get the hair done, all the shit done. But he still doesn't have the confidence to walk up to somebody. Would looking better make him more confident? I don't know. I don't think so. Personally. Well, definitely not in a monkey suit. Yeah, I mean, but you know what I mean. Like I it's look like, good, I present good, and everything. But I am god awful, uncomfortable. I don't like this. I want this off. Yeah. I'm not sure if I that just, would necessarily boost confidence. Good thought, but. Not I wasn't talking. I wasn't saying specifically about about like I wasn't saying a suit. I was just saying like getting things, you getting things that you think would buying the things that you think would give you the confidence. Would it actually give you the confidence? I don't think so because there's something else that I feel would block your ability. Like you said, you don't you don't you don't feel confident enough to talk to somebody, but you feel that way right now. And oftentimes that's sort of the case for many of us Mm -hmm. is you could, you could get all the things um, and, and still not be able to take that first step. Well, I mean, it's happened in our very lives, like as co-hosts of this podcast, all of us, I think all of us present know that a person that I'm going to use as an example for me, I learned of chess years before I met chess in person. Mm Mm-hmm. I was intimidated. Like I was in awe. I was like, oh, I'm like, this is an astute, swarthy, intelligent, biting, like opinionated, like, sir. Like, I mean, like there was just all these things like I and I and I kept putting all of these labels on them and like just did not ever feel like I would be confident in their presence or to talk to them or whatever. And I met them and tried really hard to not, you know, you know, and just like, you know, not be able to say anything and feel (laughs) right and feel the fool. Um, And then I found out I was like, oh, like. They're like caring and compassionate, like like they care about people. They're not. They're not all just they are not only these things that I have like mm-hmm. imagined about them. They are like a whole person. And that really shifted things for me because like I I had kind of put them on a pedestal in a way. Um, mm-hmm. I had also had a very parasocial relationship, like from a from an outside view, and had established this individual like in a certain way in my mind. And right. so when I actually met them, I was like oh okay like you're goofy you're fun like but also serious like like very multifaceted Mm -hmm. and i think the thing of it is is like we're we're all that in a way like as in multifaceted we just i think we kind of forget that like we we find that to be difficult and i think we also find it to be difficult within ourselves to know that we can do things right which i think is a piece of like this Sorry, Ed. We've been like going <laughs> over all this without really kind of getting into the meat of, of confidence. 
No, like, I think that's, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, I, um, it always baffles me when people say, um, when people like comment on my confidence, um, uh, like I'm like, no, (laughs) like I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm, fine. Like, I'm like, I'm so not confident. Um, and they're like, are you kidding? And then they like run down a list of things and I'm like, oh yeah. Um, and like, even when I think about it, I'm like, I guess I forget that I have confidence or, you know, um, but like, I always just compare myself to like, you know, when I was in high school or grammar school and, um, I would not like, I would never, ever take a chance and do anything because I was Mm -hmm. always scared of what could happen. Um, and like what the consequences of me doing. So I never went out for anything. I never, um, the only thing I ever really did was audition for things. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I took minimal risks. Um, but like, it wasn't until, you know, after getting clean and, um, and, you know, really putting myself out there that, um, that I did. So, um, you know, one of the things that I do in my practice often is, you know, I work a lot with with confidence. And um, and I read this really great book called The Confidence Gap by Russ Harris. Um, and Russ Harris is a acceptance and commitment therapy practitioner, um, which is kind of my uh, therapy modality of choice. And um, I was on my way to go present my dissertation research. Uh, and was like, I was really scared because like, you know, I was kind of, it was like a international conference and, you know, so I decided, you know, let me, let me read this, um, this book. So he, he talks about confidence. Um, and, uh, he says, you know, when you define confidence, um, usually there's, uh, we talk about confidence from like the feeling standpoint, that confidence is a feeling, a feeling of, of, um, uh, what was the, hold on. Um, like a feeling of certainty or assurance. Um, Mm -hmm. But he said that like there, there is another definition of confidence, which is um, an action, which is an act of trust or reliance. Mm. And that like a lot of times there is this idea of this confidence gap, um, which is that um, a lot of times people don't take actions um, towards the things that are in um, in the, 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 the pathway of their dreams or their ambitions, because they think, uh, I don't feel confident enough yet to do this thing. So I'm going to, I have to wait until I feel more confident to do that thing. And like, I swear that that was a lot of my experience, um, kind of growing up, which is like, I'm not, I'm not that confident. I can't do that. Um, I don't know if other people had that experience as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's funny thinking of it in this capacity, but when you started saying this gap and waiting until you're confident in doing something, that resonated so hard with me because it's the thing that often happened for me was, oh, I will audition for that solo when I feel more confident in singing the part or I'll wait to do this thing until I know I could do it. Because for me personally, it was always about um, failing. It was always about like, I don't want to look the fool. I don't want to be embarrassed. So, um, and that was very much the case. I keep like the thing that pops in my head right now was, uh, the first year I sang with the men's chorus, I'm bringing them up. Um, I, there were songs, there were solos that I was thinking I could do really good in, but I hesitated to audition. And the main reason I hesitated was I had just joined Mm -hmm. and I'm this new guy. Like, I don't know how everything works here. I don't know all these people. I'm barely, you know, barely here, barely a baby. I'm just a baby in this city that at that point. 
and everything else. So I was like, I don't want to ruffle feathers. I don't want to cause any drama. Maybe the confidence in a sense, like I'm, I'm fabulous. So fuck this shit. Like I'm going to rock this. And, but I don't want to cause any problems, but I think a lot of that was because of the, the, I don't want to, I don't know if I'm ready. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait. And I did wait. I did. I waited until the second concert. Um, No. The third concert. We were doing three concerts that that year um, to audition for something. And I only auditioned for it because it was in my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Um, At that stage of the game, I knew I could sing it. I knew I could probably do it. So I was like, oh, let me just give it a try. And I did get the solo, and I was like, great. And that kind of helped in a way. But it wasn't until I knew I could do it. I felt confident enough that I could do it, that I chose to move forward with it. And this was, oh, shit, about 20 years ago now at this point, I'm realizing. In a while. Yeah, I think it's interesting because, Ed, what you were talking about, like the two different versions of the definition or sides of the definition, I guess is the way I'm looking at it. What really hit hard with me was I was thinking about like my job in public health and just in healthcare in general and how patients, the public, clients, whatever you want to say, I think the reason they don't pursue like things that will make them better is because they are not confident in the service Mm. or the care. Mm. They do not have, they do not have trust or reliance in an outcome. Wow. There's a lot of talk that's been going on about stigma and like, um, what we call the syndemic. So like the crossovers between multiple conditions and how like a single experience of a, a, by a practitioner or by a staff member can have ripple effects into the future of a person's health because they felt treated poorly or witnessed someone like treating someone else poorly. And so they say to themselves, like, they they explode that out as a representation of everything. So they say, like, because I had one bad experience, I'm always going to have a bad experience. Or because, mm-hmm. like, this because this practitioner, this provider, this clinician, this staff member, this front desk clerk, this receptionist, whatever, was ignorant. They're all ignorant or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it makes this impact and it becomes legacy then. And they're like, and and there's also a lot of cultural, like like, humility aspects to care and you know conditioning and so if you come from a a tight community and people talk like you hear stories and like you kind of take them as truth whether they be true or not and so you're like oh well so and so's like you know down the street their father went and like you know blah 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 i mean you know like and i think about that like when you were saying that i was like yeah like confidence is not only like your feeling of a thing, but also do you think you can trust or rely on whatever, whoever the other like part of your entity is to do right by you? Um, That was a big thing to me that I didn't understand about kink. I did not realize that BDSM kink, like many things in life, whether or not people realize it is about confidence in that, do you trust, do you feel you can rely on the other individuals? Um, like today, like I was talking uh, earlier a little bit um, with Damon, I think. This weekend was our big Pride weekend here in Erie. And um, yesterday was our Pride Fest and today was our parade. And it was the first time I ever went to the parade in our hometown. And um, I was helping like organize a little bit of the parade and the lineup. And then like we were part of the first part of the parade. And I walked down like, you know, our main street and stuff and, you know, saw the people that were there. And it was interesting because I've, I've walked in Pride's hell. I've walked in like one of the biggest Prides around in Columbus a couple of times. So it wasn't a big deal to walk in it. And yet 
I was thinking as we were talking about this, I was like, my God, in the 1990s, I would have never believed that I would have the confidence to do this. Mm -hmm. But I also realized that like what I lacked was a lot of insight, a lot of information, a lot of life experience. Like I didn't have a concern with walking in the parade today because we had law enforcement there. And they were a part of the process to provide us safety should something happen. Um, and, like, I know that that's kind of a dicey subject for some people. I understand that. Like, I am. I try to take a neutral stance on certain things. Like, I do not think, you know, that everything's a perfect scenario. Um, not all sponsors are good. Uh, you know, not all politicians are bad. Like, it's just very complicated. And I bring all that up to say, like, I couldn't have imagined way back then doing that thing. And yet here I am decades later doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And so it did. It took a, a certain kind of confidence. But what I realized is, like, I had a lot of trust in, and I relied in a lot of people. I relied in, like, this has been happening for years and we haven't had a bad incident. So we're not expected to have a bad incident now. Um, I'm relying in like, you know, people being supportive and, you know, needing that representation. Um, seeing the and then like and part of that, like there's a feedback loop, because then I saw younger people that were there that had turned out to see the parade. And so mm -hmm. that means something to them. So like in a way, it kind of feeds back because then it turns into potentially them having confidence in an authority of their own identity to be themselves whether they have to shelter that or like kind of hide that at certain points or certain times. So I, I find that 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 in very interesting concept about that there's this other version of way to look at confidence. So I apologize, I kind of went on, but I like that that really struck me because I think a lot of people think about confidence as like, how do I feel I can do a thing? And I'm like, well, maybe mm -hmm. you don't feel you can do a thing because you don't trust the circumstance, the outcome, the people, the environment, the whatever. Yeah, so that's kind of the um, uh, the, the kind of the basic. So, like, the things that get in the way of of confidence are fear and self doubt, um, and um, and that you know when it comes to the the confidence gap that we think that like you know, we have to be confident before we can do something. But like the reality is, is we're never going to be confident enough. We're never going to feel confident enough in order to do something, right? Because fear and self-doubt are always going to be there, right? And we think that because they're there, that we can't do it. And that the stories that we tell ourselves is that um, because I don't feel confident, something bad is going to happen. Right. So like either I'm going to fail, I'm not going to get that. Um, I'm not going to get that solo. I'm not going to, um, the, you know, this person's going to reject me. I'm not going to get that job. Right. And then I don't trust my ability to like regain myself after those, those incidents, those incidents. And also, you know, I don't, you know, when we, when something doesn't go the way that we want it to happen, like it sucks. Right. Um, and we, our mind does not want us to suffer. It does not want us to go through negative things. Right. So like, of course, um, our, when it comes to our feelings, we want to protect ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. but the reality is, is that, um, you know, and those are kind of the the rules that we tell ourselves about confidence is that um, I can't not succeed. So yeah. like I have to I have to know that this is a definite yes before I can do this. Yeah. And the irony of that is through life's experience, I don't know what portion of us come to find this out or come to determine it. There's no such thing as a hundred percent. So yeah. like mm -hmm. you're, you're going to strike out. You're not going to do well. You're going to fall flat on your face. You're going to have failure. Like things will not go as planned, mm -hmm. which is a big thing that happened for me when I was um, heavily in nonprofit leadership and like doing event planning. One of my mantras I came to develop was 
the best plan is to know that the plan will not go as planned. (laughs) And that's what it came down to. Like, I just had to be, I just had to learn to be flexible and fluid. Like I had to, I had to learn, like, we're going to do this thing at this time with this thing, like, it's going to go just like this. And I knew, like, like I started figuring out very quickly, like, my blood pressure would skyrocket, my stress would, like, set in, my anxiety would hit. And I would just be like, why in the hell is this not coming together as I wanted it to? And it's like, oh, right. Because it's not about me. Like, like I'm making it about me, but it's not really about me because I really don't have any control. Mm-hmm. No matter how mm-hmm. desperately I wish for it or want it. So yep. I learned to 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 be much more like comfortable with the knowledge, which is a weird control tactic <laughs> to say we're gonna make a plan, but we also can very well expect the plan to not go as planned. And you can and like I also started figuring out I can't what if everything. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't be like, oh, I'm going to do this thing. And if this doesn't work out, then I'm going to have plan B and plan C and plan D and like, you know, infinitum. Like, I, I don't have enough time, energy, space, you know, capacity. Right. I don't have a time turner. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I have no ability to like relive things over and over again to get it right or or mm-hmm. whatever. So I just figured out, like, at a certain point, I had to say, I have enough skills and or resources to be successful to some measure. Right. Some being the key word and not trying to like make it a certain quantitative measurement. I started I started moving from quantitative to qualitative. I started moving from like metrics, which is uh-huh. difficult I think for a lot of us who work in business or related to business of some versus like the qualitative. Cuz what I started realizing is like did people have a good time? Did they enjoy it? Like, did it bring them happiness? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, great. Right. I mean, and, and sometimes you kind of have to say this, like, when people get all upset about something um, and having to deal with my own mortality over a, a decade ago, like, I spent a whole year asking myself over and over again, and, like, does this matter in the end? Which was simply to say, like, 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 when I, if I die, like, does it matter? Mm. Which is very dramatic, but, like, it really... <laughs> Holy shit serious, in. Girl. Like, well, it gets right. It gets <laughs> real. It gets real, real when you say to yourself, like, is it that big of a deal? Like, will it matter if I'm not here? Which is, a, I think, a different way to say, like, it, it, it like, are people going to die? I mean, there are definitely some decisions out there that could be that. Right. But like most of the stuff in our lives are not that. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I, I will say that to myself often, like, um, <laughs> You know, on the like large, 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 large scale, I sometimes remind myself, is this going to impact at the rate of which Jupiter turns? No? Okay. Then it's okay. Interesting. That's a way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> why Why you got to bring Jupiter to this? What did they do to you? <laughs> um, but like, sometimes like that is my, that is my comfort is to know that like on the, uh, the, you know, the bottom line is like, it, it's not that big of a deal, yeah. right? Like I can yeah. do this, right? Mm-hmm. It's not going to be the end of the world if it doesn't go my way, right? right. It's, it's one thing, I'm doing one thing. Right. Um, and, you know, but like on a more realistic scale, right? I will, I will say, uh, you know, what is the worst case scenario here? Um, you know, to use the uh, tidal wave situation, right? What's the worst case scenario if I say hello to Kevin Chamberlain? He doesn't say hello back. Um, He calls security. (laughs) um, He says, hey, you're kind of cute. You want to go back to my room? Well, that would be best case scenario, not worst case scenario. (laughs) But for some people, that could be the worst case scenario, though. I mean... Like, like the anxiety of the yes. Mm. Like for oh, some yeah. people, I think they, I think they could very easily work themselves in the other direction of fear and anxiety because it could actually happen. A lot right. of FUD. FUD? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. There you go. Yep. <laughs> like, 
what? <laughs> um, no, I, I agree, Jeff. Like, you know, that, that you know, well, now we're going to move into an unknown. And it's like, oh, okay, Kevin's interested in me. God bless. Kevin, if you have to, if you hear this podcast or whatever, feel free to reach out. We'd love to have you on the show. Um, we're not trying to talk behind your back or anything. But anyways. I mean, if, you, um, if you need need a place to record it, I got one here. I can easily get an extra microphone or something. It's fine. Um, we'll get you set okay. You know. And we like data bits around here. So, um, I mean, the, the, the <laughs> that part, right? So, no, but the, the reality is, like, um, if, you know, it, I think people would be like, like, I didn't prepare for this. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's when the confidence goes mm -hmm. out the window because you're kind of like, oh, no, like, like, like oh, this is. Yeah, you you're not supposed to, to say yes. <laughs> right, you got the confidence. You got the confidence to get to step one. Right. And See, then... that's where I think that that that's where my confidence, like my unconscious confidence, because like, like this isn't like an ego thing or whatever. Like, I know that I'm good with that. <laughs> right. Like... <laughs> If he yeah. were to say, yeah, let's go, I'm like, all right, then we're on, right? Um, uh, oh, it's oh the so what I, what, I, right, what I hear is there's no shame in your game. You're like, I got this. <laughs> I'm confident in my ability to have a good time. <laughs> you heard it from the doctor, everybody. Else a good time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Confident in my ability to give but, someone else a time, that too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> but sometimes I struggle with the with the initiation of, mm -hmm. of yeah. things. Um, but it's, getting better, right? But like, you know. And, and there's always like the getting over the hump part of confidence. It's like the starstruckness paralyzes you. But if you can get through that, ask and then, I mean, worst case scenario, they say no. But then they say yes, and then it's like, yeah, they just said yes. And now you or, get to now and you then get you're the super confident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all downhill from me. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. It's the, that. Like, and I can feel also like that, that part that can be the like. Let, let me put this another way: when you audition for a show, you a lot of people probably super nervous. They or and then they get they get the part and then before they go in front of a sold out house they're like super nervous then they go on stage and they start their lines next thing you know all of that washes away that nervous right. energy has turned into a spectacular performance and it ends with the applause but you have to get over that hump of the nervousness Right. And I think also to that point, though, it's uh, thank you for bringing that up, Jeff. There's an aspect of vulnerability um, mm. that is really a part of that, because I just think about sometimes when I have performed and like, you know, sometimes my first thing that I do on stage is a very vulnerable act. Um, and that can that can really be impactful for confidence. Right. Because I'm literally just getting naked in front of people um hoping that they accept me and and gary there's that acceptance piece right mm -hmm, um, yeah. i want you to accept me and i think that's another big part of confidence um mm -hmm. is is acceptance right. and self-acceptance well and i was gonna say like i mean i recently had to do some public speaking for work and one of my coworkers, I had a, I actually a fair number of my coworkers came out in support. I mean, it was an educational opportunity of other people presenting important things, but I was asked to be a part of it. And I had a very small part in it and I was perfectly fine with that. But my coworker that evening surprised me and said, are you nervous? And I said, not really. I've been, I've been doing public speaking for a long time. I did it in my previous career a lot, like not, not in this kind of way, but it's not that much different. Like a classroom, a training room is not that different than like a venue with several dozen pe people eating dinner. <laughs> like, you know, it's <laughs> like, like, like the environment's different. The people are different, but like the feeling is still kind of the same in a way, in a weird rinse repeat way. What I did say to them though, is I said, I'm not. I'm not nervous now, but I will be. 
Mm. And I, I wanted them to know that, like, I'm not infallible. I'm not inhuman. Like, right. I said, I will I will get nervous right when I go to go up there. I said, and I will probably be nervous in the very beginning and then it'll go away. And it's, I said, and it, part of it is because I've never presented on this before. I've never right. said this before. So, like, that's what I learned from being a corporate trainer is, like, practice does work you towards perfection, quote unquote. Like, mm-hmm. the more you do something, the more you, like, you know, have the repetition, then, like, it becomes rote. And so you can keep adapting and adding more skill nuance whatever to the thing that you're doing it's kind of like sex the very first time ever you probably should be nervous you probably should not have confidence you probably should expect it to be a disaster preferably you're with a compassionate caring partner who's game for all of that and or just as inexperienced as you like Uh and then you just like make it a mess you know like you know just go at it, be safe, have fun, you know, like try to figure it out, navigate together in the journey and, and, and make the mistakes or whatever. And right. so I did, like, I went up to speak and sure enough, I was like, I was like, we're doing this thing. And like, we're just going to get it done and over with. And, but I also was confident, like, I know I can do this. Like, and I know what I'm talking about. Like I, I chose what I'm speaking on. This mm-hmm. isn't, this isn't, uh, seventh grade no eighth grade english with a college professor who made us get up in front of the class and talk about a topic that we personally selected and i like full-on probably had a panic attack i just didn't know it at the time like i was Mm -hmm. so freaked out and so scared to be in front of my my peers my own classmates Mm -hmm. and then it wasn't until later in college i figured out what that was all about i was scared that they would see through the charade of who I am and wouldn't give, and they wouldn't pay any attention about what I was talking about. And they'd be like, that fat fucking faggot. (laughs) I mean, seriously, seriously, that's what I Mm -hmm. thought. Like I thought like somehow standing in front of them in front of a group of people was going to reveal my, my like inner identity that I was gay, that I was into boys. I I liked men like, you know, that, um, that I was a homosexual, like not practicing, but you know, like, I mean, (laughs) it was just this thing that like, and it wasn't until I came out in college and like years had gone by. And then all of a sudden I was like, Oh, That's what that was about. That's what that was about. I was scared. I lived in fear of of the truth that and like that I wouldn't be accepted and that like Mm -hmm. it it, like, you know, they would I don't know, like throw me out of school or, you know, and Mm -hmm. then like I mean, I just like, you know, what if and like and totally. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't until later when I took all that power away and I was like, yeah, what about it? I suck dick. Like, like you got a problem with that? (laughs) Um. I was very obnoxious when I came out of the closet. Uh, (laughs) But like, you know, I like became empowered and impassioned. So like, I don't find many things in my life anymore to like scare me away from something. Mm -hmm. Instead, I find that I get anxious, Mm. which is not the same thing. Like I get, I get nerves. I get uncomfortable, like, like you're talking about, Ed, like, you know, speaking on stage or like being in a show, like I am so like, I'm proud of you and in a way in awe that you did kinky boots. Cause I'm like, I don't know if I could do that. And then I'm like, I mean, there is a small part of me that's like, bitch, you know, you can do that. Like you've been in a show before a couple of shows, like, you know, like you have the capacity to do that. You know what I mean? So like, I think that's yeah. what happens yeah. to all of us. I think we have that inner back and forth. Inner Very true. Damon, what were you going to yeah. say? No, just the 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 reality of this is, is is very you know true. Like the idea that um, we become our own. We always think of the worst case scenario. We're the ones that kind of build that up in our minds, mm-hmm. and that has a tendency to shake the confidence. Um, you could um, kind of like what Jeff was mentioning. Um, you could audition, like for me, like you can audition for the solo and then you're like, oh yeah. And then you get it and you're like, oh great. Then you have to realize, oh yeah, you have to actually do it. You actually have to go on stage 
right, right, right. Like, well, that's what that's the, what I call the now what. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Like and it's where, like, clearly you had the confidence to step up and audition and do that step. Now you need to have the confidence in the have faith in the your ability right to have faith it, in yeah. You, yeah have faith in your ability have faith that that was there was a reason why you were chosen to do this thing and it's not an easy it's not an, a thing that often happens it's not the 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 um it's not always the thing that comes so quickly it can take a while i think all of us have kind of indicated in a way that there was a hesitation, there was a nervousness, um, anxiety, imposter syndrome of, of taking the next step. But it always, almost always, I will say, ends up for the best. I've had, um, since that first solo many, many years ago, I've had many solos since then. And that's been- Humble brag. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well um but um it has been i still know that i get that that nervousness i get that butterfly i get that like oh you know hopefully this will go well um i do my best though to channel that so that it doesn't shut me down mm -hmm. So I know it's going to always be there. Gary kind of indicated that. I know it's going to be there, but it's what I do with it that makes it worthwhile. Like, if you let it shut you down, then... It's going to. Yeah, it's going to. You have to believe in yourself and believe in your ability. You, 